Okay. Did my internet go out again? Can you guys hear me? Vicky, can you hear me? I don't think the guys can hear me. Can you hear me, Martin or Marshawn? So I don't, I'm, I'm not getting anything from anyone. I can't hear anyone, Vicki. This is Mercury Retrograde at its finest. <laughs> Can you see what's going on? I... I think I'll just try to come in on my phone. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Side, we know we have the intuition and we know what we need. We just don't trust it sometimes. And as we start trusting the, our intuition, just trusting that um, the, the universe, the spirit, spirit, God, you know, whatever you call it, God, call him, her, it, that it really takes care of everyone because we're all part of it. And that anything that you take on is really an opportunity for growth and an opportunity to learn the lessons that we came here spiritually to, to experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah, that's really that's great. The and spirit. I, I know that I missed something. You know, we're we're doing a conference doing Mercury retrograde. So mm, and it we, just started. Yeah, you know, it started on the seventeenth and eighteenth. So we we're gonna include it inside of this and realize that just what you were saying, Martin, everything, right, we're all taken care of, including all of that energy that's, you know, missing us right now. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong. Mercury is doing his thing, and mm -hmm. we're doing our thing. Yeah. And sometimes there's, it overlaps, and something gets hidden. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. In relationships, the male does this thing, the female do their thing. Sometimes they overlap, and sometimes it gets no uh, um, zeroed out. There's nothing wrong. It's an experience of learning. Well, yeah, but you know, again, inside of being empowered, 
I, what I, what we were looking at what needs to be cultivated. And I heard you speaking mm-hmm. to some of that. And I heard you speak to, uh, our, you know, being spiritual and being present to present to our intuition, but we have to assume, right. Or mm-hmm. even put in a context that everyone is not exposed to you. It drives me crazy when people go, they don't have common sense. Well, there's all of us were raised in different mm-hmm. households. So what's mm-hmm. common to you is not going to be common to me. So that's mm-hmm. a judgment right there, right? So if we're really help to, helping people to cultivate, we want to cultivate from a place that says they're starting from nothing. So if they're starting for nothing, what do we put in? What do we, where do we support them so that they can cultivate? You know, one of the things I spoke to while you were off is mentorship. Yes. It's, it's, it's really looking at the support mechanism for with people who have um, experience and expertise in being able to let you see this, the, like the island the foundation of the island that's under the water that you don't normally see mm-hmm. and show how strong it is and how how much of a foundation there is so that when you look at the island, you say, hey, it's it's a rock. It's not moving anywhere. Right. I'm a rock. I'm not moving anywhere. So I can actually take on something that's intuit- that I intuitively know to be important and move forward from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you add to that, Marshawn? Uh, I would agree about, and let me make sure I'm, I understand the question. We're talking about cultivating our power, cultivating um, a force so that we can go about moving throughout our life. Yeah, and, and, and helping people to, to so we're saying, we're, we're saying to empower your emotions and I got that. Yeah. Mentor, so I would agree with Martin. Um, as far as being being young, um, growing up, uh, mentorship. I had I. There were elders. There were people around me that were that surrounded me that um, really sat down with me and pushed me to really. Um, I. For me, you need a support system that's going to be able to let you freely um, be yourself and um, grow into grow into that force, that power that you want to be. Um, as far as moving through life, mentorship, I also would say. Um, if you don't have friends, um, go about speaking to people that you look up to. Um, there, I know everyone doesn't have friends, family members, but there, I figured that if you ask the question, if you speak it out, it will, it will, it will appear itself. Um, I know you, you, it's almost like you, you, you know, I, I'm careful of that too, because I live very magically too, right? <laughs> like I yes. can speak things into existence, but that comes from cultivation too. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. there was a time when mm-hmm. I couldn't do that because I hadn't developed that power within myself to do it. So I, I, you know, I, where I speak from, I, you know, I like to work with people who have to create from nothing, you know, and cause that's where I've always had to create. I've always had to create from nothing. And it seems like, you know, even when you started off, you said, you know, I know how to pull myself up by my bootstraps. Well, what if you have no boots? Let me, oh, okay. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. So, cause I, I was trying to sit and really, I, think about, understand the question before I gave an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, if we're speaking from starting from nothing, mm-hmm. I would say you have to, one, you have to be open to changing your mindset and be open to um, 
be open to doing things differently. Because I feel like growing up, for me, there were a lot of men, there were a lot of young men who um, wanted to be in a position of power, wanted to um, do things, but they really weren't, they really weren't ready to strip away certain mindsets to go mm. into that power. Mm. For me, growing up, um, it was all of, and also learning to be okay with um, sometimes standing alone. Because yes. I feel like we're all, I feel like the, another thing that I saw was that the men, they were, we were afraid to be seen as um, we were afraid to be alone or independent or be isolated because um, we we were in a fight to be accepted. And ah. I feel like once you, I feel like, I feel like once you let go of the idea of wanting to be accepted and just being truly, be able to accept and be able to change that mindset and being truly who you are, um, you will you will go into that power because I feel like for me, um, and when I tell other people what I will tell other people is that sometimes you you just have to stand alone, um, not willing to be right, and um, yeah, you you have to stand stand alone, stand in a vision. And surround yourself with people who are going to support that vision. Yeah. That's what I would say. That's one. Um, as far as relationships um, for men, I would say that um, you have to really, you one, you have to be willing to do the work to um, do that relationship inventory and really think about um who am I? I feel like a lot of times men and women alike, we're, we're trying to think about what did this person do in the relationship to cause the breakdown, and we're not doing enough of inner work, really working on... I for, And I recommended this to someone who was in the same position in me, and I told them, for 30 days, I want you to write down who you... Who, who am I? Who am I? 30 days. Just write down, who am I today? Um, not who you want to be, but who am I? And then, from there, and then from there, we can work into who you want to become and what you want to cultivate. Um, mm -hmm. And really, t we, and I also want to say, be okay with all aspects of who you are. The crazy, um, <laughs> I feel like a lot of times we're so quick to, we want to be something so great that we're quick to denounce that the so-called bad parts of who we are, but they, they are a part of you and they, they, they are what make you who you are. And that's okay. That's powerful. And thank you. And I want you to know that you are doing great. And I am so, I am so excited to have you on this platform because this also is you being present to cultivating yourself in a conversation of leadership and, and, and what you're exhibiting and what you're displaying to everyone is the courage that you have to put yourself out there. And that's what people need to see. You know, we have to be willing to ship, be willing to show up, stand alone, be different, you know, try something new. Let me expand my mind so that I can see what this is instead of deciding, oh, I don't like it before I do it. So, you know, I just and want really to thank you. Letting yeah. go, and really letting go of the fear. Um, really, I love when Martin first spoke, Martin first started speaking about being homeless and how yes. it really, for me, it really starts in the mind because um, when my parents got divorced, me and my sister, me and my dad, we were homeless. I remember me, this house, before it got rebuilt, me, my sister, and my dad, we all shared a room together. Yeah. And we all, we all bathed out of a bucket. Yeah. Um, and even though, because I remember about a year later in the fifth grade, we had someone talking about what is homelessness and I'm listening. I'm like, 
that is what homeless is. And I and I just feel and I, and it really starts in the mind because when me and my sister were growing up, we never felt homeless. No, we, you were having we an felt, adventure. Yeah, you we were, were literally we having home. an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> We never it, no. really being able to let go of those um, those expectations that people that the society has put on us on what we what we should be and not who we truly are. Yeah, yeah. What were you saying, Martin? Um, I, I, two things. The first thing is mentorship. You know, I, I spoke about mentorship. Yeah. And it's mentorship is really two ways. You know, I'm I'm sitting and I'm listening to this youth and <laughs> he's really mentoring me, you know. <laughs> you know, um and and in society most of us think it's it's one way. Yes. It, it, it really is both ways. Like the mentor and the mentee is one and the same. Yes. And they're both distinct. Yes. You know, and so I really want to acknowledge and appreciate, you know, the the gift you are in in this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I, I try. I try. No, are no, you, you do. You no, 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 Yoda no, said no. Try do. No, no, You're doing. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's another thing too that um, we got to start watching our conversation. Okay. The words that we speak mm-hmm. create the world around us that we have. Yes. And you know, an example being that you, you know, you, you're so powerful in the way that you're speaking, and then you're saying, "I try." Mm-mm. Well, I, I say I that. I, 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 no, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. No, just, 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 just be with it for a minute and listen. Mm-hmm. When you say I try, you're not acknowledging that you're already doing it. You are doing it. You're already where you are, and then you're saying I'm not. So, you know, you're basically saying that to your spirit that that's that you're generating where you're generating yourself and you're saying to your spirit, Well, I don't really believe what you're actually doing. Mm. And if we extend it, and when we extend it to our community, and we look at the words that we say, and start taking it, no, start really being aware of some of the words that we say, and we let go of some of the words, it changes the our whole community, it changes our perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, when we say our oh, men are shit. Yeah. That's what we're asking our men to live into. Mm-hmm. When we say uh, women are bees, mm. that's what we're asking our women to live into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as we change those words, and you know, our men are powerful, and our women are beautiful and strong and healthy and awesome. That's the community that we generate. That's the community we want to live. That's the community I want to live into. And I would assert that's the community we all want to live into. Yeah, and that's and that's what we're really seeking in ourselves, right? To I love that, Martin, because the words that we say actually do create our experience. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we take ownership and being responsible for how we're speaking, we actually get to be empowered in that moment. So, you know, thank you, Marshawn, for getting that communication, because literally you are doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Not just doing it. He's being it. He's being this. He's being it, mm-hmm. and in the next breath, he's not acknowledging and appreciating it. Mm-hmm. You know what? Somebody said to me sometime, and it is, um, it was an older guy. He said, uh, how would it go? He said, um, I appreciate what you do for such and such. And I said, oh, it's no problem, not a big deal. No. What he said was, hold on a second. I said, I appreciate you 
for what I see you being. Mm -hmm. This is not about you. This is about me. Mm. And when you don't accept what I'm saying, you're basically saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Wow. So when I appreciate you and you say thank you, you're telling me, you're, you're, you're acknowledging me. That's powerful. It's not about you. You're mm -hmm. acknowledging me. Mm -hmm. So let's acknowledge the, the men around us. Acknowledge the women around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because. Just because. Yeah, I, you know, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've been accused of being a little Pollyanna-ish, but, you know, hey. You know, that's, that's, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and then I get to have great people around me. So guess what? Ooh -hoo. Be Pauly <laughs> and have great people around you. Exactly. Hey. So I'll um, take that one. <laughs> I'll take that one. Exactly. So now, you know, what I want to do is be able to share um, with people who are listening, you know, any resources, any books, what would you recommend for them inside of this conversation of empowering emotions? What are some of the things that you would recommend that they could do to cultivate for themselves? What, what would you suggest? I would say one of the most important things to take on is meditation. Yeah. Um, meditation allows you to be in touch with you. We don't spend a lot of time with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to the degree that we can spend time with ourselves is the degree that we can spend time with other people. Yeah. When you can sit for five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour, just being with yourself and loving yourself. Mm -hmm. God, you, you step out of there and you love everybody. Yeah. You know, men, men have estrogen and they have testosterone. Mm -hmm. They have both. Yes. So we're both male and female at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or the energy, and, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And to the degree that we own both of them, we can own everything. Oh. Um, so I would recommend meditation. Um, I started uh, um, an organization called the Mastery at Generating Greatness in Community. Mm -hmm. And it's a network. Um, we don't have a website up as, up as yet, but uh, Mastery, um, the name is called Magic, M-A-G-G-I-C, Mastery at Generating Greatness in Community. Okay. Dot net. That's, that's the website. It'll be up soon. And um, my email is martin at magic.net that's magic with two g's cool. or info at magic.net if that's easier to um to get to and you know if there's any kinds of conversations you want to have where you want where you you are out to empower yourself to um take on your vision i would love to have that conversation with you and support you because the empowerment of community is the empowerment starts at the empowerment of the of the individual. Mm -hmm. What about you? What about you, Marshawn? You have any resources or any um, books or materials you would like to be able to share? Um, to I would definitely agree. Um, meditation, whatever that looks like to you. Um, I would also recommend just really truly um spending time with yourself um being able to um really sit in the energy that you hold because i feel like a lot of times we're going into the world we we take we're taking on so many people's energies and we're not really um 
I was just talking to someone about this. No one is really sitting with themselves, really understanding how they operate going out into the world or how they are dealing with certain situations. And that could be from, for me, um, for me, it was really like disconnecting from social media, um, sitting in my room, um, taking myself to the movies, um, doing activities that really um, push me to um, be with myself. Um, one book that I would recommend that ha- that helped, two books that I would recommend that helped me was um, The Battlefield of the Mind mm-hmm. by Joyce Mayer. Okay. And then um, Acts of Faith, Daily Meditations for Colored People, for People of Color by Yala Van Zandt. Those two books tremendously um, helped me to really, um, like you said, cultivate my energy, um, really disconnect certain ideas that I have about myself going into the world. And also, like Martin said, really sitting with I think a lot of times men are afraid to really delve into that feminine energy. We've been taught that something we've been taught that something about having feminine energy as a man makes us less than or it makes us weak and weak in per se. And I find that um I find myself finding more power just from looking at women in media and reading about powerful women and um if there's just such a power about that um that that you can take on your male and your female um energy and really going out into the world and um expressing that to people Mm -hmm. um letting go of that let it and also i would tell people to really sit and meditate and ask and ask for ask to let go of that fear that you have about truly um being yourself because that fear is like someone said um about about the corona it's almost like the you had the fear before going into it and when you go back out into the world with it you're taking that fear with you wow. so you're opening yourself um for any for any energy like that to happen and come into your life um and also really journaling also journaling helped me as well um, really writing down how I feel, what I want to do, who I want to become. Um, and another activity I would recommend is a vision board. Um, really um, sitting down, writing, I would first write down a list of what you want to accomplish, who you want to be, um, how do you need to get there, Um also, for me, it was some, uh, some things I didn't know how, how I was going to do it, but I, I wrote the question, um, set the intention of, like, if, even if I don't know um, how it's going to get done, there will, there will, it will make a way that it will manifest itself before me for me to um, make, it, make it happen. Um, and, yeah, just really, um, really delving into self, letting go of the expectations, the fear that has been, because I feel like a lot of the experts, a lot of the fear comes from the expectation and the expectation is the fear that's this um, debilitating. It's like a vicious circle. (laughs) Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm glad you said that. One of the things I remember being a, um, you know, 13, 14 years old, and I loved reading. And I had this idea that I wanted to go to college. However, uh, my grandmother had raised five of us. And out of the five, I was the youngest. And I watched as the other four in front of me that no one made it through high school. So I said, well, I have to not go to high school because there's something wrong with high school. (laughs) You know, there's something (laughs) going on in high school. So I created 
going over to the University of Chicago campus at the Midway Plaza. Mm-hmm. I used to go over there and do my homework and pretend that I was in college. You know, <laughs> this was before I knew about the power of visualization. This was my intuition just that I'm, you know, I'm going to college one day, you know. And sure enough, when it came time for me to go uh, to get through high school and, and graduate, you know, it was one of the teachers that said, you know, we got to get you out of Chicago. And they found a college and helped me take my ACT and the security guards bought the luggage and the office clerk bought my airline ticket. You know, and my family was looking at me like, well, where you going? I'm going to college. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and no one in my family had been involved with any of it. Right. And yeah, and I went to college and, you know, of course, when that was happening, I didn't think back to when I was sitting on that campus, right? It wasn't until later till I realized that that's how it happens. And that's what I mean by thinking magically. You know, I had been studying the power of the brain, but then when you start making it work in your life, you know, it looks different and it feels great, right? Yes, yes, it does. That is great. You know, hey, you know, yeah, I, 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 I want to um, say something in regards to something's present for me that, you know, a lot of times we think that the experience that we have is unique to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, as as a man, that this experience is unique to myself to myself because it's it's you know it's happening to me, right? And you know, in in the perspective of 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 Martin, you know, this mm-hmm. body called Martin is absolutely true. However, you know, there's such a gap between Marshawn and I. You know, there's an age gap. Yeah. You know, he in his is is some of his 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 younger years. It was just his dad and 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 his 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 family, right? Yeah. And I grew up in a household that had both my, both parents um, that were always around. You know, they've been together for you know, over 60, 60 years, right? Mm-hmm. And we both still struggle with the, the, the issues that come up as being man, men. Yeah as being a human being. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not that you know, it's unique to one of us. It is part of life. Yeah. This is what life brings to us to be the best and the best self that we can be. That's great. And with without the 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 challenges, I call it challenges, not struggles, because I really start looking at the words that I use. Mm-hmm. And challenge is something that you know you take on a challenge. It's something that it causes you to stretch, to get beyond. And a struggle is like, you know, I got him beat up. Mm-hmm. It's no different, but it's a different perspective. And you take on a whole different attitude when you take it on. So, you know, in watching my words and also really show, looking at, you know, the, the, where um, uh, Mashan is mm-hmm. and, um, just, just, I don't think he has a clue on how much training he's had at this point in time. I, I, I don't know that he does. He, he knows it. <laughs> and I, I really have to look at, you know, if my younger self had hit, 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 had hit, his age had that level of training, the community around me would totally be transformed. Transformed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so, the idea. It, that's very so, good. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, Hey, look guys, um, this is not an individual thing. Mm-hmm. This is not something you can't get through. I was you no, know, what uh, where uh, Mashan is right now, you know, I was there at some point in time, but not at his age. Yeah, you know, I was always looking, but not as his age. 
and and time compresses and and impacts compresses Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are just taking on like really having a a fantastic life having the life that you deserve that Mm -hmm. i deserve yeah that you deserve that's exactly right and and just saying it just start by saying it you know i deserve a quality life that i see Mm -hmm. Like, just start saying that. Take it on. Just mm-hmm. say it for a while mm-hmm. and see the difference that it makes. That's great. And also, um, I would want to say for for men, um, especially coming from the south side of Chicago, um, I think a lot of times, um, at least from my eyes, there it's always been a judgment on um I think in our eyes we've like instilled that fear into young men that the dreams that they have are not possible. Mm. Um we place judgment on their dreams and we we push this idea that you can't that your dream is too high. You can't push for that dream because it's not achievable. But mm-hmm. and I feel like um for for me, um, we have to push we have to push them to reach the impossible. Um to letting them know that their dream is achievable, um, not necessarily um doubting um the vision that they do have um so yeah that's that's what i would say too i feel like a lot of times from my eyes um it's all they a lot of people some men are afraid to go after their dreams because they've been taught that if i do share my dreams or if i do tell my vision that it's not i won't get the support that i need to reach that dream you know when when you were talking it reminded me i don't know if you remember but you know how we study Dr. Pukram's work. Um, I, I think it's in session fifteen. You all guys, you Yay. guys, yeah. And we're, okay. we're yeah the the seven circuits of the brain, right? Mm-hmm. So our educational system really does keep people in those lower levels of the brain, right? So no one, mm-hmm. when you talk about realize, because I I'm I'm so with you inside of us there's something pushing us and prompting us to to move and expand and to grow and to believe in yourself. And then on the other side, there's someone who said, oh, no, you can't do that. Or who do you think you are? And that's the part that we have to cultivate to get beyond that. Yeah. And we also have to own that, you know, Black Wall Street doesn't just happen. Yeah. Black Wall Street existed, and it was powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And we're capable of doing it. We forgot, and we gave up on it. Right. But we're capable of doing it. You know, I I, I want to share two experiences that I had. Um, I when I was had my construction company on the west side of Chicago, and um, we were uh, rehabbing houses and, and apartment buildings. I used to use some of the people that were in gangs and um, were just hanging out because they had nothing else to do. And I trained them in um, in plumbing and electrical work and drywall and stuff like that. And some of those people were on drugs. And I remember oh. one person disappearing for about a week and coming back to me and saying, hey, you know, I can't work for you anymore because – I'm going to put myself in rehab because oh, wow. you showed me that there's a way that things can be done mm-hmm. that just because just who you are showed me a possibility. You know, any one of us can do that. Any one of us can do that. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It's just we step up and be ourselves, be the authentic selves that we are. Yeah. And if I could share one more experience, um, I was 18 years old and running a nightclub with my brother. 
And my parents used to help us in the nightclub. And this is Toronto back in a long time ago. (laughs) Oh, this is Toronto, Canada. Yeah, I'm I'm Canadian. Oh, okay. I'm I'm from Trinidad also. Oh, (laughs) and and my kids are American. (laughs) Do you you speak Do you speak French? I know Canada is a francophone country. Some provinces of francophone. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And, and I did speak French and Spanish, and I don't speak it much anymore because <laughs> gotcha. whatever you don't practice, you start losing. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing in terms of what we're doing here. If we don't practice this, we'll lose it. If we don't keep sharp on listening, like uh, we'll lose the ability, mm-hmm. and we have to start again. So the, the the other experience I wanted to share is that in that nightclub, um, we were, you know, we were just teenagers. Right. But what, what we were doing is just enjoying ourselves. My brother was the best DJ and people used to travel from as far as New York to come to Toronto on a oh. weekly, weekly basis because he was that good. And um, back then there was a guy... Um, I I was the bouncer, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was that popular people started breaking in to get in, and I stopped the, this group of people coming in, and there was um, uh, the head of the gang was in the front, and I was speaking with him, um, and I basically told him he has to leave. He, you know, you can't come in. You coming in through the back door. You got to go back through the back door. And um, he ended up leaving, and I didn't do it stupidly because you know I'm not just stupid, <laughs> you know. I don't, uh, but the bottom line is, my mother heard about it, and um, she found this guy and brought him into the kitchen and sat him down and talked to him for about an hour. <laughs> Everybody's dancing, partying, having a good time. And she talked to him. No, I wasn't there. I was <laughs> doing my thing. <laughs> and I met him about two or three years later. And he was playing for, I think it was the Edmonton Raiders. Oh, wow. Oh. Now, this was the head of a gang, right? And he was playing professional football. Wow. Wow. Because somebody like listened to him as his potential and spoke to him with respect Mm -hmm. and asked him to speak to and relate to other people as respect at the time. You know, as men, we can have those conversations. Mm -hmm. As women, we can do that too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it is possible. That story, that same thing happened to a teacher of mine in grammar school she she had she had a similar experience with a young woman and mm-hmm. she ended up she ended up being the first cycle winner of America's Next Top Model. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and all it takes is a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. But not just any conversation. It's gonna be like a heart to heart committed conversation. Mm-hmm. Like like you get to the point where you say, Enough of this crap. I'm bigger than this. You're bigger than this. And let's have that conversation and let me remind you who you are. Because in reminding you who you are, I remind me of who I am. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. And thank you, Martin, for, you know, all of your stories, both of you. And, you know, when you were saying that, all I could think of is if we could just, each one of us, just get one right? Just have Mm -hmm. one empowering conversation and really have people get present to who they are in our listening. Like we can provide that. That's such a generous offering. You know, we have no clue who people are. We have no friggin' clue. Excuse my language, but we have no clue. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I've, I've worked with people who were work with the Rockefellers mm-hmm. who were, were 
essentially worked on billion dollar projects. Mm. But you would sit with somebody and say, oh, they said they're homeless and you go, okay. You have no clue who old people are. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in so, my book, I write the homeless people as the heroes. So, you know, yeah. I've, I've, I've cultivated myself to the point that I can hear greatness even from the two-year-old who's talking to me because they can yeah, teach and, me. And, and I'm saying that not personally. I'm saying that to really to the people who are listening to this, yeah. that you really have no clue on who people are. Yeah. And that includes yourself. Yeah. You know, you don't give yourself the credit that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And and stepping into that, you'll transform a community yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. People, and I, I hope you guys are hearing that. I, I did want to add a couple of more references for those of you who are listening. One of my favorite books uh, for cultivating inside of yourself and strengthening yourself is called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. I first read that book when I was 17 and the doctor said that I would probably never have use of my right leg again. I fell through the bleachers at a football game. And um, uh, one of my high school teachers brought me that book. And three days later, I was able to go home, even though I had worn, I had to wear a body cast for a little while. Uh, I still was able to go home and still was able to graduate with my class from high school that year. So I highly recommend, I used to give that book away every year until I realized people weren't reading it, you know, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, and then I, I realized that, you know, I took that book serious because I was laying in traction for three months, right? <laughs> I wanted to get up out of that bed. So it was, you know, and I still read that book every year. You know, it's one of my, you know, and I'm talking about years, 40 years later, I'm still reading that book and still being inspired by it. So again, it's The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. The other book, uh, one of my favorites is The Biology of Belief, The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And he literally did the science behind how I was able to visualize three little black men or three, no green, they were green. I would now use black men, but they were green then three little green men that knit my femur bone back together oh. um, because your imagination and affirmations are the things that could change your whole gene structure. You yeah. can change your genes, your G-E-N-E, -E, with affirmations and visualization through the power of your imagination. So that's in The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And then the third one is uh, You Can Heal Your Body by Louise Hay, which points to the metaphysical and emotional connections between illness and symptoms in your body and probably some of those suppressed anger and and pain that you haven't let go of and they take place in your body and become um you know part of a process of us letting go so they actually trigger us to let go oh. but because we don't let go they become dis-ease or illness so again, the name of that book is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And it really helps you to hone into your emotions and and see where they have triggered, um, you know, pain or disease in your body. So those are the three. And uh, I just wanted to share those with you because this conversation is inside of creating healing waters for men. So we're giving you, um, you know, the, the things that we know and even a conversation to let you know that it's safe for you to heal. And it doesn't mean that anything's wrong. There's nothing wrong, right? And to piggyback on the second book, yeah. um, I really, uh, the book that I mentioned, Acts of Faith, they have daily, they're 360, it takes it gives you an affirmation for each day out of the year. And with that affirmation, there are many journal prompts okay. that you can do 
to mm. go with that affirmation. So yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. What were you going to say, Martin? Were you going to say something too? Um, I, and I, I'm going to add that there's no excuse if you don't have that you don't have time to read because I don't read as the books as as much as I used to. Well, as I used to. Yeah. I listen to tapes. Yeah. You can get most of these books on tape. Yes, you can. And listen to them in your car. Listen to them when you're walking, running, or whatever you're doing. Yeah. And they're really cheap, but, especially on Audible. I think some of these books. They could be eight to ten dollars um, mm-hmm. just for the audio version of it, and some of them are free on YouTube. And, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I uh, this a thing called ownership that's really really powerful. It's really being being taking responsibility for your life as it is, mm-hmm. and um, I said I was homeless at one point in time. And I actually, after it was all done, I took responsibility for it and saw that I actually caused myself to be homeless. I actually spoke myself into homelessness. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, I started going, you know, I wonder what it would be like to be homeless. I wonder what it, and after a while of wondering, no, the universe gave me what uh, a taste of what it would be like to be homeless. <laughs> and on the other side of that, after I got frustrated with being homeless and I said, no, I don't want that anymore. I started manifesting what I wanted as a job yeah. and the area I wanted to be in. And after 10 years of not being in that, that, uh, that, um, that area of work, I went back into that area of work and got more money than what I said I wanted to have. Yeah. Actually, no, the exact amount that I said I wanted to have. Yeah. And after 10 years, just put myself back into the driver's seat at a level that I was that was higher than I was making before. That's so, you know, there's no excuse to say, I cannot. Mm-hmm. And ex- when you say I cannot, mm-hmm. is you just being irresponsible. It's mm-hmm. me being irresponsible. Mm-hmm. Just say I can. And if you don't believe it, just keep saying it until you believe it. So, and, so for, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And, um, uh, go ahead. Wait, I'm sorry. It'll probably trigger, anything. it'll probably trigger you because I, I, I wanted to say for someone who's listening right now, if they needed assistance inside of dealing with um any um any challenges that they're having with their emotions you know what would you say to them right now and martin i think you were starting to say some of that but what specifically what other thing would you say to them to have them shift really start using the words of the future that you want Mm -hmm. no life is really if life is a movie, right? If we look at at another person and we say, okay, I saw when they were a baby, I saw when they were a teenager, I saw when they were 50, I saw when they were, uh, and you, you, you know, put it all together. It's really a, a movie, a picture's all the way through, right? Mm-hmm. Our ability to look at that movie and say, okay, I remember when they were 40 years old and I remember that that time frame. We do that all the time. It's called memory. Mm-hmm. Well, our life personally, not like not another person now, like look at the, look at yourself, myself. My life is a movie. And I know what I was like. Well, I have some aspects of what I was like as a baby when I was a teenager, when I'm 30, 50. And I have some perspective of what I'm, when I'm 90, what I'm going to be like in 105. Well, to the degree that I look at 105 and say, oh, that's what I accomplish. I can actually take that movie and say, okay, let me start at 105 and live it now. Mm. Okay, I start at 95 and live it now. 
And I just start being that person. That's 95. Being that person is 105 because it's a movie, right? Mm -hmm. It's a movie. I but you would be choose. that. You would be that inside of what you've accomplished. I would actually be that just because I I saw that. Mm -hmm. If I can see something, mm -hmm. I can accomplish it. Yeah. Every building that was built was seen first, and then it was built. Yeah. So you see yourself as the completed building mm -hmm. and then you live it yeah and yeah. you build you build it yeah that's so really you great. get to create yourself however you want to be yeah yeah and it, I, that's, it has nothing that's right. to do with the past nothing to do i remember i remember getting to 30 and and thinking that i wasn't going to live past 30 it didn't find out till later that people that grew up in the kind of environment that i did normally didn't live past 30, right? But here mm -hmm. I was 30 and I had already had, you know, some accomplishment, but I realized I had not planned past the age 30. <laughs> so like, like you said, Marshawn, I literally started doing, I probably started doing vision boards to remind me of what future looked like because I had not planned anything past 30, you know, and that that is what, you know, drove me, you know, to begin to create Master Force and do more of that work because I realized that young people, you know, have to know that creation is, is creation is juicy, <laughs> you, you, you know, yeah. and you get to say. You get to yeah. say, you get to say what 105 looks like, you know, yeah. from the and you get to story. live it now and you get to live it now. Yeah. And yeah. expand it inside of that. Very cool. Very cool. Marshawn, did you have, we're, we're coming to the end of our time and, and, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that you've shared and said everything that you wanted to say inside of this empowered emotions conversation. So uh, any final words for you, Marshawn, and then you, Martin? Let me let me make sure that the that we were still on the same question. The, the question was, um, if someone needed assistance, mm -hmm. what what would we recommend? Um, I agree with everything that Martin said. Martin hit the nail on the coffin for me. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like just it. learning from you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you are like my it. mentor. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um like you like you said, really um sitting with yourself, having that clear having that clear vision, um speaking more towards um because I know there's a lot of I know in recent years a lot of people have been uh, a lot of young people have been bringing up the discussion of mental health, um, what I can do to, um, get, get to a, a good sense of mental health. And I would say is one, allowing yourself to, you have to focus on the hurt and you have to give yourself permission to sit and feel the hurt. And you have to trust your intuition that your soul can get you, um, to that other side. And you have to be able to like let go of the ego. And um, for me, speaking for heartbreak, you have to stop. You have to let go of that question of of why did it happen, what I could have done, because you then you start to understand that even when you do get the answer that you want, the soul is the ego is never going to be satisfied. So you have to sit in the hurt. I would mm -hmm. say. Um, like I said, get a good friend, confidant, therapist, someone that you can speak to. Um, and if you don't have that, I would say you need to, you have to, you have to turn to spirit, some form of spiritual connection, meditating, praying to God, um, something that is going to give you clarity to, to move beyond the hurt and the anger. And then just be gentle with yourself and what you think and how you how you approach things. Um, like I was saying, moving from getting getting back, getting moving from that idea of oh, I need to get back to myself. You have to adopt and move into that space of a new reality. 
Um, and yeah, just really journaling, doing things that make you feel good, and remembering to breathe through everything that you're going through. And also, I would say be ha- express gratitude for yourself because throughout it all, you were there for yourself throughout the entire um you were there for yourself throughout the entire time that you were experiencing what you went through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those would be my final. That's really great. And and I want to just add to that. If you need to speak to anyone, you can actually call 773-969-6211 and leave a message. That's our voicemail at master force. And yeah. um, you, our website is master force leadershipacademy.wordpress.com. We have a great deal of courses. Um, Our favorite course is the life course um, where you can learn how to deal with life inside of struggles and, 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 you know, any kind of disappointment because disappointment is a part of, you know, and I'm like Martin, you know, the challenges of life, right? They actually are there to expand us. So, we want to learn how to be gracious with those things. When things happen, it's like, whoa, I'm about to be expanded. Let's go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, what about you? Any last words? Um, I, 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 I really want to acknowledge Marshawn. Because yeah. what he's given me is a, a, a picture of, of, of the future. Mm. where in in high school conversations like this occur wow. in elementary school yes conversations like this occur and that's a whole totally different world that we live in right now yes and you know marcia you really uh i i really you are my mentor mm-hmm. <laughs> i thank you. you you you're you're awesome you're Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. Thank you. And I also want to thank Master Force Force and you, Mushin Su, for putting this together. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. The kinds of conversations that that we have, that we've had tonight, have been um, on the cutting edge. Yeah. You know, it's it's been authentic. It's been real. And you know, a lot of times we we talk about real being real, but it's inside of of the inauthenticity or the mm-hmm. um, not wanting to be straight. Mm-hmm. And you know, having these kinds of straight conversations causes a change, causes transformation. Yes. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me, um, magic dot net m-a-g-g-i-c that's martin at magic dot net mm-hmm. or reach out to master force master force has some great courses mm-hmm. and i would recommend them at any any time very cool and and marshawn we're going to make sure that we post about your upcoming events i'll put it on the master force website as well as uh, we yeah. have a, we have a facebook presence for ignite your soul connection and listen we have three more magnificent nights coming tomorrow night. We're speaking about grounding yourself spiritually. So I love that you guys are like meditate, meditate, meditate. You know, that's one of the ways, but we will speak about many of those tomorrow. We will speak with um, um, our other executive life coach who is Osara 10. He will be here tomorrow. And then on Thursday night, we will be having a conversation with Dr. Tammy Matthews, where we're speaking about health, sex and well-being right so that'll be really great and then on friday all of you guys will be back where we will have a conversation about relationships and we will look at that from many different perspectives and uh, many varying degrees of experience as well so we invite you guys to come back and again marshawn and martin Thank you so much for your time, your energy, your attention, your insights, your motivation. Just 
I had such a wonderful time with you, and I couldn't have asked for a better guest on this topic. So thank you, and thank you for both of you being so gracious with one another. It was beautiful. Thank no, thank you, thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I love sitting and learning, learning things, being willing to, um, you know, take on and understand different ways about. Um, how I move in my life. So, yeah, thank cool. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you also. Yes. Ashe. <laughs> Ashe. Vicky, anything else? Is that it? Do you have anything uh, for us? No, I'm just going to ask you to repeat the books maybe one more time. Yes. That's what I'd like to get those. Okay, so uh, the ones that I listed were The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. The second one was The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And then the third one is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Oh, and can I, should I list the one? Yeah, and then Marshawn had two. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I have another one too. Um, that I just thought about. Um, so the books that I mentioned were Battlefields of the Mind by Joyce Mayer and Acts of Faith, Daily Meditations for People of Color by Yala Van Sants. And then another one that I would add is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Okay. Very cool. Martin, did you have any books? I, the books that were mentioned were great, and I will leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we want to thank everybody for coming out. Hopefully, we'll see you all again tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Martin and Marshawn, stay on, please. Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was that was very awesome. Uh, you are awesome. Uh, you are too, Marty. You are very wow. awesome. <laughs> wow. I you can... know, you can only say that because it's right there in you, right? Yeah, that's right. That is true. Yeah. Mirror, you mirror. Can't, you can't see something that you're not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. I can't believe you're driving, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's great. Like we said, we're going to send the dome on us. <laughs> we got to make it regardless. Yeah, so go you set yourself. We stand on it. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I want to, hold on. It's one thing I want to get. Read out your email, though, so we can order people some on the, um, okay, again, and the, because, um, to the end. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, you know, you're the, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing because I need to reevaluate some stuff. Glad for it. Okay. Very cool. All right, guys, enjoy this evening. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.